Hello, good morning. Welcome to my Sacred Place Devotion, but it is a special edition. It's special because for the first time, MSP Devotion is actually visual. By visual, I mean that if you log onto our YouTube page, you can actually see me talking directly to you. So this is one-on-one with Rev. Oix Alfred on my Sacred Place Devotion. We've been running the devotional for the past years, December 2021 will make it eight years. And so as we wind down this year, I decided to make it a very special edition by sharing with you the learnings that the Lord has taught me. I've worked with the Lord practically all my life from the time I was a teenager in university, got into a relationship with the Lord. And of course, he has taught me so many wonderful things that has changed my life. And so you can imagine that it's a, it's a tough call picking the top five things that God has taught me, the top most important things that God has taught me, five of them. So this entire week, I'm going to be looking at the five things that are very critical that God has taught me that has changed my life. So today I'm going to be sharing the very first one, the most powerful lesson that I've learned from the Lord. And it is this, God Almighty is in control. He is in charge of the entire universe. He's in charge of every created being. He's in charge of everything that is yet to be created. He's in charge of the past. He's in charge of the future. He has ultimate control, but he has a control of the entire universe. However, there's a small portion of the universe, a very tiny portion of the universe called planet Earth. Now, he wheeled that planet Earth, handed it over to his first creation in terms of man. His name is Adam. And of course, Adam sinned, and because Adam sinned, he willfully handed over the earth to the devil. And so from that point on, from Genesis uh, chapter 3, from that point on, this earth came under the control of Satan. And so that's why the Bible tells us that the devil is the god of this world. So he runs this world. Now, by creation, it is God's world. But by legal transfer, it is Satan's world. So right now, Satan is running the world. Satan is the God, small g, of this world. I know because the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, he says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So the Bible is very clear that Satan is the God of this world. If I read another scripture from 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, we know that we are children of God and that all the rest of the world around us is under Satan's power and control. That verse is also telling us that Satan is running this particular world. Again, just to portray the point, take a look at John chapter 14, verse 30. He says, I don't have much time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches and he has no power over me. So that scripture says that Satan is a ruler of this world. One more, John chapter 14, verse 30. He says, I will not say much more to you because the prince of this world is coming and he has no hold over me. Again, telling us that there is a prince over this world. His name is Satan. Okay, maybe I should take one more. Let's look at John chapter 16, verse 11. The Bible says, judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. So over this small portion of the universe called planet Earth, Adam willfully handed it over to Satan. And the Bible recognizes Satan is the God of this world. The only way that God can intervene in the life of an individual is for that particular individual to specifically invite God into his life through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living in the life of the person or to invite God into his or her situation or his or her circumstances. Then God will have the legal jurisdiction to come in and do whatever he needs to do in your life and destiny because God is so fair. That he's even fed to the devil. So he will not go and snatch back the world from the devil until the time that he gave Adam expires. So God gave Adam a time span to rule over this earth. And now Adam has handed over to the devil the control of this world. But the devil can only control this world within the time that God has given Adam to run. Now when that time expires, God will now come back and do a purging of the world system. But typically, why is this a very powerful truth? The truth that God taught me here is unless you invite God into your situation, 
God will not step in because there is a ruler of this world. But there's something deeper than that that I learned from it. In spite of the fact that the devil is war ruling this world, guess who the God and the controller and who has jurisdiction over the devil? It is God. So what that means is that Satan is ruling this world, but he submits to the almighty called God. Everything submits to the Almighty. Satan has no choice but to submit to the Almighty. Men have no choice. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 21 verse 1, he says that the heart of every king is in the hand of God and he can turn it to whichever way he wants. Meaning that God can control men. God controls the devil, right? He controls situations. He controls circumstances. He controls every single thing in this life. So what does that mean? What is implication? It means that if I want to succeed in life, whatever I need to do in life, the only pursuit in this life is to find a relationship with God. I shouldn't worry about the devil. I shouldn't worry about men. I shouldn't worry about anything. If I can only find God, if I can pursue God and find him, then everything is sorted out. Because at the end of the day, God has ultimate control over everything. When God shows up, the devil has to go by the side. When God shows up, men have to go by the side. No matter the situation and the circumstance, God is the ultimate God. And all I need to do is make sure that my life is this to God. If I can find friendship with God, I don't need to worry about anything. That's what the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 83. He said, listen, I know that you have the need for cars, for shoes, for bags, for all of those things, but can you just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Why did Jesus you know, bring that advice? It's because he knows you don't need to run around worrying yourself about all sorts of things. All you need to do is to find God. And that is the basis of my pursuit of God. Because I know that in God, I have peace in life and even in the life after. And this is the secret that Paul knew when he said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, he said, all I want that I may know Christ. That is the secret that Moses knew when in Exodus 33 verse 11, he said, I just want to be intimately acquainted with you, oh God. I just want to know you. And these are men who have had a deep walk, you know. Moses, for instance, had lived in the palace of Pharaoh. He had been exposed to fine wine and everything. But he came to a point in his life when he realized, you know what, the person that has the ultimate control in this life is not Pharaoh. It is God Almighty. And he partnered with God. And that's when in Exodus said 3, he cried out, Oh, that I may know you, oh God, that I'll be close to you. The same thing with Paul. He was a government official. He was going into, into people's houses, dragging them out, you know, trying to enforce the, the, the Roman rulership and all of that. Trying to enforce also the, uh, the, the beliefs of the Pharisees until he met God. He realized, you know what? The Pharisees are not in charge. The Roman officials are not in charge. The person that is in charge at the end of day is God. That's what the Bible tells us in Psalm 127. He said, unless the Lord watches over a city, the people watching are wasting their time. Unless God is one behind your job, toiling from morning to night is a total waste of time. Unless God is behind any project, whatever you're doing is a complete waste of time. And that is the secret that Daniel knew. Daniel knew that the ultimate God is God the Father, which is why when they say stop praying, he said I would rather be thrown into the lion's den than to stop my prayer. And so Daniel continued to pray. He's like, why am I bowing down to you when I know the person that is in full control? That is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew. They said that we would rather, we can't bow down to you because we know that God is the ultimate God and you, King Nebuchadnezzar, at the end of the day, you will bow down to this God. So when I found out that at the end of the day, from Satan to men, to situations, to circumstances, to things that were created in the past, to things that will be created in the future, to things that are created, that all of them all answer to the almighty God. Wisdom says, if you can find God, if you can partner with God, if you can be close to God, then there is nothing on earth you should worry about because you have peace in time. You also have peace in eternity. This is the most powerful thing God has ever taught me. That at the end of the day, all you need is me. I'll end with the story of Mary and Martha, who sat at the feet of Jesus was actually Mary. Martha was running about. You know, distracted by so many things. And Jesus said, Martha, you are worried about too many things. The story is in the book of Luke chapter 10. 
And then in verse 42, he says, you are worried about too many things. But he said, only one thing in this life matters. And he said, Mary has found it. It is connecting deeply and genuinely with God. That's what Jesus was trying to tell Mary. If you find me, you don't need any other thing in this life. Because every other thing you need, I will supply both in time and in eternity. That is why the Bible tells us in Matthew 13 that, you know, a man found a pearl of great worth. That is what the kingdom of God is about. It is a pearl of great worth. If you've not found that pearl called Jesus, you have not found anything in life. You know, the greatest treasure is Jesus. I'm having a relationship with Jesus. It is the greatest treasure of all. And so the Bible says, when the man found the pearl of great price, he sold everything because Jesus alone is worth everything. You know, you need to come to that deep and intimate fellowship with Jesus. I cannot begin to describe the kind of life, the kind of peace, the kind of joy, the, the things that will happen in your life because you came in contact with the greatest treasure of all time, which is Jesus Christ. This is the most important thing that he taught me, that the pursuit of any life that will make sense is a pursuit of God and not the pursuit of any other thing. Everything ultimately submits to that one God. Everything, no matter what it is, it submits to one God. I hope that you learned and that your life will be changed as you Learn this by revelation, not just by information. Thank you for listening. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing with you on the second most important thing that God has ever taught me. Thank you for listening. God bless you. you for other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle or Yiggs Alfred. Can you sing it? Mine is higher.